Hey y'all, welcome back to My Medieval Corner. Today, it's story time. I know in my last video, I said I would cover some important points of the sport and hobby, but after I started writing the script, it turned into story time. So I have to reserve those topics for another episode. With that aside, I'm going to tell some stories of glory in my medieval fighting. This episode will give you an insight to the type of mayhem you can expect from events in the SCA. One of these stories is rather embarrassing, but it's whatever. As always, we'll send it off with a horn chug. So have a seat, have a drink, and enjoy. Let's have some fun. Way back in the day, when I was a young lad in Michigan, I was part of a pirate crew. Now, in this crew were a couple of barons who made cordials, which is a super sweet liquor. Even though I was underage, I was told that I handled myself well. This is not a story about me handling myself well. It had been a great weekend, and I had done well on the archery range. I had watched the fighting, I attended court in protest, and I even went to the dance. As soon as the sun set, I loaded up my basket and I started delivering cordials from camp to camp. The rules of my delivery was that we only wanted the empty bottles back. In my travels, I would check out the camps, hang out with friends, and listen to the stories and songs at the fire. This is where I learned to never drink anything that was labeled surprise. They were some gracious hosts. I once watched a female fighter chug the biggest horn that I had ever seen. A monster of a horn that would make Thor blush. It was at this camp that I was dubbed with my old nickname. Someone asked my SCA name and after I told them, he said, I'm just going to call you Scallywag. Well, it stuck like glue. The night goes on, and I get lost on my way back to my tent. I'm stumbling, and it was dark, so I called my mom. Yes, my folks were there and aware of the shenanigans I was up to. Funny enough, my mom was not 30 feet from me when I called. She notified me that I was only two camps away from my home base. So I get back, reload, and thought I could wander off again. Well, I make it across the street, and I had more than my fair share of cordial. So I sat down in a ditch. One of my crew buddies found me and tried to guide me back to camp. This is when my stomach decided to turn upside down. I found a clearing and I let her loose. I heard a female's voice ask if I was all right. My crewmate says, yes, he's okay. His tent is right across the street. I'll make sure he makes it back, your majesty. I tried my best to make apologies and I remember her saying to meet her at court the next day. So I make it to court and I did my best attempt at apologizing for my belligerence to royalty. Once I was done, she stands up and says, Scallywag, if you didn't throw up, it wouldn't have been border war. I was then given a service award called the Northern Star for my drink deliveries. I think this one's really funny. So it was the same event, but the year after. My parents and the crewmates and I were sitting at camp, and it was late, and I had already done my walkabouts. Suddenly, this guy stumbled into our camp, almost falls into the fire, and then starts laughing with a drunk, maniacal canter. We help him up, and we ask the usual drunk event questions, like, Hey man, what's your name? Who are you camped with? And do you know where your camp is? 
he staggers and turns to us and says, Wait, wait. You are confusing, Tron. <laughs> so we laugh. But old Tron starts walking off, and he seemed okay until we watch him fall into the bushes, which were on a hill and led to a river. Uh-oh. So we jump from our camp and try to find him. He seemed to have totally disappeared. About five minutes went by, which feels like forever in an emergency, and my dad yells, here he is. He was upside down, passed out on this hill, covered in leaves and bushes. Only his foot was visible. We pull him up, we sat him in a chair, and double-checked on him before we went to bed. The next day, he was gone. But later, around dinner time, we saw him walk past our camp. and We all waved and yelled, Hey, Tron! But old Tron looked very, very confused. When I became a man-at-arms to my knight, it came with a caveat that it had to be done on the battlefield and I couldn't turn down any challenge until sunset, dukes or better, to open. The moment the belt hit my waist, a badass Duke of Artemisia steps up with the classic, I'm your huckleberry. With the whole event watching, I lost four out of five passes. These challenges weren't just fighting. I did everything from pick up fights against dukes to charging the shield wall with only daggers. And a very, very violent knife fight. Straight up or tan knife on the ground and it was a fight to the knife and to the kill. Best of three. The king at the time had challenged me to be the one to carry his banner into battle, make it to the far side of the other team, and plant the banner without dying. This was heinous, but I was victorious. Once the armor was off, it turned into games, feats of strength and learning. I played around a round of chess, was given a kit to learn embroidery, and I was challenged to learn dances and songs, arm wrestling, straight up grappling, and a whole bunch of drinking. One in particular was my battle brother, Sven the Wretched. We had a race to three beers. I chugged them down while he just sipped his one beer. He just wanted to watch me do it. Everywhere I turned, I was given a challenge. After the sunset, my knight announced that the challenges were closed, and we celebrated. But I decided to do extra credit, because I was feeling emboldened. So I started challenging others. Some were rematches from earlier, more drinking, and I was challenged to escort people back to their camps. It was an amazing experience. And if I am ever to be knighted, my man-at-arms and squires will have to do the same. It was a long day of fighting, and my battle brother and I were having dinner at camp. We purposefully camped as far away from court as possible. Suddenly, our friend looks up at us and said, I just heard your names called from court. We didn't believe him. For one, we weren't after accolades and we were notorious court skippers. More or less, we're stick jocks. Anyways, we hear someone coming down the road calling for us to present ourselves to court immediately. Well, we come out of hiding and there are two knights. One has a spear and one has King's Justice, which is the King's great sword. Both our lives steal. They drew on us and took us prisoner. 
They took our drinks for making them walk so far. Anyways, they escorted us at sword point to court and threw us at the feet of the king and queen. We knelt, but I heard them say lower. So we dropped to two knees, lower. So we dropped to all fours, lower. We were kneeling, but completely face down flat. We thought we were in big trouble. Maybe for some drunken shenanigans the night before, or maybe we fucked up on the battlefield somehow. We had no idea. But the king started saying very nice and positive things about us and said that we couldn't give one without the other. My homie and I were inseparable at these events. The crowd started cheering, and we were commanded to rise. We were then adorned with belts, daggers, and a medallion to symbolize that we were now lords of the kingdom. We were granted title. An award of arms by the king and queen in the SCA means that we are trusted with live steel in the presence of of the crown. My all-time favorite event, Melee Madness. It's not every day that you have a full-on battle at a castle. A lot of fighters come to this event. Usually, they'll pick captains and split us up into two teams. We'll start with an open melee, and you normally get like three reses. One of the top tier knights told me to get my war shield, as he wanted me on the front lines. I came back with my buckler. He laughed and said, only you would. In this battle was a giant of a man. We straight up asked him how big he was. He is six foot eight and over 300 pounds. I got him on a death from behind. This is where you bear hug someone from behind and declare their death. I had to jump on his back like a monkey. He didn't even budge. He just tilted his helmet and nicely let me down. I'm lucky he didn't say, okay, and then fall over on top of me. Once we're done with that scenario, we move on to the bridge battle. It's a narrow bridge with a small fence on one side. And the rules say that if you even touch the fence, you die. Because that fence has a 15-foot drop to the ground. The scenario is heinous. Because when you die, there's no room for you to get out. And you have to drop to the ground and curl up. You will get stepped on, and other fighters will die on top of you. I believe this was the year when we did a column charge and a couple fighters decided to put me up front and use me as a battering ram to burst through the shield wall. I didn't survive this, but it was hilarious. The next scenario is the ramp and stairs. One side of the amphitheater has stairs, and the other has a ramp. One team defends, and the others attack. This is a very tactical fight. The goal is to break through the defense and kill them all. From there, you switch sides, so both teams get a chance to play attack and defend. We move further up the castle and do the room defense. Defenders in the room, and the attackers fight into the room, through a doorway. This one is claustrophobic. Once that's done, we do an open room fight. But if you can make it out of the room, you climb some stairs to the top of the castle and fight the champion. In this room fight, I had the giant trying to take his revenge on me. He rained blows on my shield with his axe. And to this day, I haven't seen such fury in a man's eyes. I stabbed him in the face, made my way out of the room. And there stood the champion. Intimidation factor was through the roof. 
This knight is a badass. If he wants to run through you, he will. We exchange. It was probably only seconds, but it felt like a whole battle. Somehow, I had grazed his cup with my weapon, and he steps back and call it good. Which means, I had just won. In my bravado, I tore off my helmet and gave a battle cry from the tower of the castle. I turned around, and he told me to put my helmet back on. I was going to earn that war cry. I put my helmet back on, and I won the rematch. I received a fine congratulations from him. We changed sides, and it was our team's turn to pick a champion. Our team captain looks to me, points with his sword. Get up there. I climb the stairs, and I take my position. I hear the chaos in the room beneath me, and a fighter warns me that a challenger has made it past the guards and was climbing the stairs. A brief exchange, and he was beaten. Another challenger appeared, and he was also defeated. Then, two warriors came up. They looked at each other, then attacked. I held myself well for a minute, but was overtaken. I called down to let them know it was over. After we took off our helmets, the two fighters said, We were so glad that you had a shield. Because if you had two swords, we were done for. I had never felt so badass. To top it all off, as we were taking off our armor, I was approached by a squire who was to notify me that I needed to stay for court. My battle brother said, I know what you got. You won the axe. Every year, the court chooses a fighter to be titled the Melee Madman. The trophy for such a victory was a five and a half foot Dane axe. They called me up before the king and queen and said, this year was a no brainer. They named me Madman. I carried that axe to every event for the next year. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this walk down memory lane with me. I wanted to tell tales of victory because they are always the most enthralling. Today's horn chug is Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Skull. Please like, share, and subscribe. I have a lot of fun bringing you content and look forward to more adventures in medieval combat. This is a journey that we can all share.